you know, go from being like a, a feather to an elephant. You know, that much of a difference because of that. It's just showing that everything we perceive with the five senses is, is completely relative. And that's why our perceptions of time and space will continue to alter and change. And nobody is really the same as they were five seconds ago or five minutes ago. You know, there, we, we have the illusion that we have these persons and that we can describe our history and everything, but we know how it is when you get ten eyewitnesses trying to describe what they, they saw, they see different things because of the variations that are there. It's very like unfamiliar, so there's like some fear that comes in with that, like uh, you know, really coming into the whole instant. <laughs> yeah, it's very much like for human beings. Human beings can seem to have a fear level around certain things, and then when they keep interacting with it and practicing, that they start to gain a bit of a sense of a mastery or a sense like, oh, I was afraid of that. But I didn't know what that was, and now I can do it. And now, oh, it's, okay, it's fine, it's, it's, it's accepted, you know. And I think with spirituality, you go more and more into it, and you start, to, you have a lot of fears that come up. But until the upside down perception comes completely right side up, it's pretty much of, a, of an adventure, it's tumultuous. You know, some of you have heard of that movie, uh, The Poseidon Adventure. There's been a couple of Poseidon Adventure movies, but the whole ship gets capsized. You know, there was the first one, then there was the second one, Marine McGovern. There's got to be a morning after, if we can hold on through the night. You know, it's, it's a very spiritual song, <laughs> because it's describing almost like this whole world is, is capsized, and now we're all upside down. And we're trying to, let's keep on looking for the light. You know, we're hoping there's a way to turn this, this ship right side up. But then everything's upside down. And so we're like in the dark. We're stumbling and we're, our relationships are awkward. Everything we think we know, we, we're on our career path. We think we've got it all, our whole life's mapped out. We've got our career set, and we're all set. And then, fwing, you're married. You think you've married him. Till death do we part, you think, I'll, I will love you forever. <laughs> Me and my baby, my sweetheart, we're unbreakable. We're unstoppable. There is nothing in this world that's going to break us apart. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I want a divorce. What? <laughs> you know, like, no, we, 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 that, we, we, you promised me. <laughs> Till death do we part. No, I want a divorce. You know, it's shattering. You might say that along this whole journey of the human experience, there's going to be many, many shattering points. Because we've become addicted to linear time, and we want continuity. We so much want continuity. That's what people are looking for in relationships. They want continuity. Stay with me. Instead of that, like the Carol King song, Will you still love me tomorrow? You know, I want my happiness, my stability, my peace depends on what you and I are going to be doing for years to come. And when the divorce comes along, it's like wham, slice, like the butcher's knife coming. Boom! You know, there is no tomorrow. We have no future. Actually, when you come more into the holy instant, that we have no future together suddenly becomes the truth. It becomes from this panic thing to, oh, we actually do have no future together. We have now together. We've always had now together. And we always will have now together. I've even done talks, I was over in, I think, Spain last year, and I was giving this talk on the Holy Instant in the present moment and relationships and everything. And I didn't know it, but they had told me to come over and they wanted me to marry this bride and this groom. The bride and the groom were in the audience. I had met them. I was supposed to do their service the next day there. In the, so the next day when I came to meet with them, I said, do you have any vows? They're both Spanish. He said, I love you now. That was, <laughs> that was their one in Spanish. <laughs> It was a real quick service. 
I love you now. I love you now. You may kiss the bride. I mean, it was really. And I played Ave Maria, you know, this beautiful Ave Maria. And they all just swayed and danced. We were all kind of in this mystical state, but they were very happy. And that's that's all they could settle on for their vow. I love and, you now. and it was easy to remember your vow. It was. <laughs> and no broken promises. No guilt. No, you told me. No expectations. You don't need divorce lawyers. You know, just think about it. The practical aspects of that are enormous, you know. But you see what a contradiction that is to believing that the love is linear. And then looking for love on the linear timeline, looking for all that continuity on the timeline. And it's just not there. So in the end, you know, I mean, for centuries, uh, nuns had gone through all the vitiate, they had to go through all these different steps to become what? The Bride of Christ. Now that, you can see what they're desiring is union with Christ. But we're learning from A Course in Miracles, that takes a lot of forgiveness. You, know, you can't just say, I'm the Bride of Christ. You actually have to let all the darkness up, clear it all out, and then when you're clear, and you're clean, and you're into alignment with God, then you're more than the Bride of Christ, you are the Christ, you are the living Christ. And that's really our destiny. Our destiny is, is to remember ourselves as the Christ, at one with God, which Jesus was showing. That's why they call him the Way Shower. He was leading us, he was showing us the way, all the teachings in the Gospels, and then now, here we have A Course in Miracles. You know, uh, in the Gospels he said, take no thought for the morrow. You know, the day has enough troubles for itself. Take no thought for what you shall wear or what you shall eat. Well, that's pretty specific. Don't be concerned about what you're wearing. That kind of rules out the fashion industry. You know, <laughs> and, and right away, you know, okay, I, I, I don't want a profession. Take no thought for the, and, and takes away nutrition, takes away the dietitian, you know, all the things that in this world are so big on what you eat. Take no thought for what you shall eat. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and all else will be added unto you. It's a very practical and very simple teaching about living in the present moment. So, you know, thousands of years go by, he comes back through Helen Schuckman, and it's kind of like, in case you missed it, in case you missed it, I gave it to you really simply, they did a pretty good job, and they put it down in this book called The Bible, and a lot of these Bibles, they put my words into red print. Mm -hmm. But if you still are having problems, <laughs> out of this whole book, I'm just reading the red print, I'm going to give it to you again. And he says in the Course, once you have accepted his plan, the Holy Spirit's plan, as the one function that you would fulfill, there will be nothing else the Holy Spirit will arrange for you. Without your effort, he will go before you, making straight your path, and leaving in your way no stones to trip on, and no obstacles to bar your way. Nothing you need will be denied you. Not one seeming difficulty, but will melt away before you reach it. You need take thought for nothing, except the only purpose that you would fulfill. Lilies of the field, take no thought for the morrow, take no thought for what you should wear or eat, and in case you missed it, he gives us a passage that in the Course of Miracles has been called the promise. The promise is extremely simple. It's basically saying, get in touch with your purpose and follow the Holy Spirit's plan, and you need take thought for nothing. What about? practicalities of living. What about economics? No, nope. you need to take thought for nothing. What about exercise? I was just uh, in Greensboro and my friend Gayla, she said, do you brush your teeth, David? She wants to know, let's see the practical application. How far are we going? Do we have to brush our teeth? Do you floss? You know, is, I love North Carolina. They're like, come on, we, we heard the teaching of Jesus. We're going to get down to the nitty gritty here. Let's, let's get down to the nitty gritty. So I, I talked to her about how everything is given and orchestrated. And what, you know, 
Nothing you need be, will be denied you, not one seeming difficulty, but will melt away before you reach it. That's sounding really good. That's sounding like divine ease. And that's saying, all you have to do is have alignment with the Holy Spirit, and absolutely everything, the financials, the food, the housing, the relationships, everything. You don't have to worry about Mother Earth anymore. You don't have to worry definitely about Father Time. Uh, you don't have to worry about the ozone layer anymore. Pollution? No. Don't give a thought to pollution. Recycling? No. Don't think about recycling. You know, skin care? UV rays? No. 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 I said, you need to take thought for nothing. 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 Mortgage payments? No, no, no. You're miss missing the point. Nothing. Nothing means nothing. Nothing means nothing. So, you know, it almost sounds like a, a bit like a fairy tale. You know, when I mean, you really take his central teachings, he's saying they're extremely simple, but you have to transfer the training. You have to apply it across the board before you see that it actually works. And to me, that's the feeling I had in my life, all these years ago, where I thought, okay, I, I've read it in the Bible, I was a Christian, I read it in the Bible, I read it now in the Course, and it was almost like he was doing like Morpheus in the Matrix, like, with the finger, like, come on, come on now, you're going to jump with me, or you're going to go for this, and, and that's been the experience, that's where the, the joy, the happiness, the laughter come in, is saying yes to that finger that's calling you. It, it can seem extraordinary, but, but for me it was devotion to inner listening. Because I did have people that came after me that kind of like peace program went around the world, you know, just living very simply and everything. And they said, I tried, David, I, I quit my job, I started just walk, walking and traveling around the world and I got beat up and mugged and robbed. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I didn't tell you to do what I'm doing. <laughs> and Jesus is not saying, do what I did. You don't have the crucifixion scene to look forward to in our lives or anything like that. He's saying, he's saying, think, think with me. When he says, I'm calling you out of the world, he's not like going to say a laser beam is going to come down and just take your body up out of the world. He's saying, I'm calling you out of the thinking of the world. I'm calling you out of the fear-based thought system. The ego made the world. The ego is fear. When you believe in linear time, it's like, uh, it's like if, if the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, was playing Yale on Yale's home field, it, it would be a road game. Well, spiritually, we're on a road game. We've, we're on the road. We're on the ego's playing field. That's why we really need guidance. We need a good signal caller, a good play caller, who's going to call the plays from above. Because it's a hostile crowd. They're all booing. <laughs> As some of you may have noticed in this world, there's a lot of uh, antagonism that we get from all angles. Because we get these mixed witnesses. We're on the road. We're trying, we can't even hear the signal sometimes. You know, the signal caller's calling, we can't even hear the signal. The crowd is booing us so strong, you know, and making all this noise. Because trying to disrupt us. And so that's why we really need to, as best we can, give it over to the Holy Spirit. So I figured I would test it out with Jesus. You know, I, mean, I certainly didn't try to just say yes, yes, yes. I mean, I would try to reason with Jesus. I would say, listen, listen, I have been on planet Earth for 20-some years. And now first let's talk about money. You know, you say, you take, you need to take that for nothing. All my conditioning says, you better pay attention to your money issues, because you're in big trouble if you don't. You could end up desolate, broke, or in prison, or, you know, if you don't take care of it. So I said, money does not grow on trees. I cannot just go out and start plucking $100 bills, and $20 bills, and $10 bills off of the trees to pay my bills. I said to Jesus, money does not grow on trees. And he says, yes, I know you believe that. <laughs> this is how you start it. Because he's not going to try to just deny what you believe in, but he said he will tell you it's a belief. Mm -hmm. 
And of course there's beliefs in nutrition, of course there's beliefs in economics, of course there's beliefs in uh, maintaining the body, there's beliefs in medicine, you know, there's beliefs in all kinds of things. And he's just saying in lesson number 50, I am sustained by the love of God. Come with me, just take a movement towards me where I'm at and start to question these things that you're sustained by all these other beliefs. Maybe your mind is filled with unreal beliefs and he's saying that's okay but we can work with that. That's what he was always saying to me, I'll work with you. I know you still believe money does not grow on trees so I'll guide you towards jobs and jobs will give you money to pay your bills and pay your debts and we're going to practice forgiveness while you're doing this. Mm -hmm. We're going to practice rinsing, rinsing, rinsing the mind of all these erroneous beliefs you have. But we're going to be practical. We're not going to skip over anything. While you still believe you have debts and you need to work a job to pay the debts, that's fine. I'll guide you to those jobs. I'll guide you very specifically while you're wound into this linear belief in time and space. I will filter through your belief system and give you clear, practical guidance. Where to go, what to do, when to stay, when to leave. You know, those are important decisions that we have to make. And if we make them out of fear or past learning, we tend to stay stuck in the same routines, the same patterns, just going round and round. But when we give them over to the Holy Spirit, we still handle everything. You know, everything still gets handled. You still go to the grocery store, as long as you believe you still have hunger, you still need food to handle that hunger, you go to the grocery store, but you have holy encounters in the grocery store. You, you start to see the Christ in everyone you meet, in the, in the laundromat, at the grocery store, at the auto mechanics. You know, like Gabriel, when he was getting his windshield fixed on his truck, he had a holy encounter with the guy while he was doing it. He was enjoying this beautiful time together, this joyful talk together, while well, the guy did a great job of uh, fixing the windshield. So to me, that's what makes it practical. I always talk about it, it's not just been a lot of affirmations and a lot of hopeful, wishful thinking that I could manifest a different world, it's been practically speaking, where would you have me go, what would you have me do, to who, who would you have me meet, what would you have me say. Coming and doing these gatherings for 20 some odd years, I just show up. I don't have anything planned, written down, no agenda, don't know what words will be spoken or given, but I do trust that it will be for my benefit and for the benefit of the whole universe. But I don't have anything in mind for it at all. And, and we can do that with, with our life too. Let's keep on looking.